My name is Cal Mullane from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm at the Compass FBC to spread the message of freedom. One particular interesting uh, news from underground topic today will be on the USPS. They're uh, considering now and actually raising the cost of stamps by uh, three cents. You know, and of course, inevitably, all of these uh, all of these pennies, all this uh, increased cost is add up, right? You know, of course, they've already increased it over 150 percent in the cost of stamps. It's not like you have much of a choice. You know, remember that. That's what happens whenever government monopolizes any service. The cost always goes up and the quality always diminishes, always goes down, uh, because there's no freedom to compete and just delivering pieces of paper. And in, also in the fact that this is the 21st century, we're now emailing, you know, of course, <laughs> aside for John McCain, you know, that guy doesn't know how to use the internet, right? Uh, or internets. So there's no freedom of competition. Remember, FedEx and UPS can only deliver packages, same thing with DHL, but they can't uh, compete in that market or set up the infrastructure just to deliver pieces of paper. Right, uh, and to make it convenient to you as a consumer, you know, you'll, with that freedom of competition, you'll find not even better quality, but the cost of these things always go down too. And that's when you happen, when happens when you don't have a monopolized service. So, you know, there's something to look into, and, and also, you know, please check out your if you do go to USPS. And I'm, uh, I'm not saying, of course, this is the only particular place you can, you have to deliver some stuff uh, because we don't have a free market yet. And so, you know, do what you have to do right now, right. Uh, you look at, uh, but if you do happen to go to a USPS uh, building, for example, you know, pay attention around around the area. You know, pay attention to like how decrepit the building kind of looks like. Uh, take pay attention to uh, the wear and tear. You know, that is this unsustainable? You know, this is what happens. You know, and then go to a FedEx store, <laughs> go to um, a, a UPS store, and see how clean and and, uh, and neat that and organized that that place is. Right? I mean, that's that's a very very visible. Uh, example that you can try and test yourself and also take a look and take it to see if you can find any clocks at your local USPS uh, sometimes they'll still have a sign on there that says uh, it's illegal to uh, take out your phone while you're standing in line you know there's different ways to control you there's different ways for you to, to see the matrix uh, that's right in front of your eyes so please enjoy this content please uh, subscribe if you can and see you at the victory party take good care You guys care? All right, great. Come here. All right, so I'm gonna actually. Are we gonna be filmed? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's for, it's for a YouTube channel. It's gonna be okay. easy. It's gonna be fun. I just asked three simple questions. Okay. All right. Very briefly discuss the hidden lines behind government and just ask for your thoughts and comments. Yeah. Uh. Uh. All right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, come, come closer. Come closer. I'm not gonna bite. I'm not gonna bite. <laughs> All right. First question. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems in one way, in a singular way, and that's to the threat of the use of violence to solve any problems, versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that us four here are already shared. Right? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. That is interesting. That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. Um, Alright, so this moral stance that us four already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Uh, like in science, anions and cations, an means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy means one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. So we can still have rules, but what government is objectively, they have a monopoly on services. They have a monopoly on law, they have a monopoly on courts, judges, security, police, uh, roads, currency, first class mail. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, withdraw, <laughs> or even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the consumer, right? So that's what government is. They have a buying monopoly on these services and they don't allow the freedom of free market competition, right? So we can still have roads, we can still have security. In a free and voluntary society though, it's you who gets to pick and decide who's providing the best, you know? Who's providing something that's not going to be harmful to you, right? And that's where the power comes back to the consumer. Like you look at uh, Netflix, try to raise their prices overnight last year, and what, people, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, they try to raise their prices, and people are like, oh no, fuck that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu. <laughs> right? So the freedom comes, and then, and then went down, right? And, and that's how the power comes back. You see uh, former security, and, and they're throwing people into cages for victimless crimes, you're going bankrupt tomorrow, right? Yeah. Or you can have the freedom now to compete and provide a better service. Look, go with me instead, you know, I'll provide you a better service, ignore them, and, and uh, you know, go join my business instead. Right? So anyone can compete. And you have this competition of like awesome services efficiently. I mean, anytime you don't have a monopoly when there's free, com free competition, quality always goes up, 
and the cost of these products always goes down. Like I may not be able to afford an iPhone 7, I can definitely get the iPhone 2 now, right? <laughs> right? But it, but that's not that's the office of a government. Uh, with the monopoly, cost always goes up. That's why you'll never have social security when it's your time to retire, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> and quality always goes down, right? Yeah. Uh, you can look, when you go to a local uh, post office, for example, they have a monopoly on delivering pieces of paper. It always looks tore down, wear down. Uh, when we go to FedEx, uh, it's, it looks nice, pristine, organized. They can only, they can only market in packages though. So they can't deliver pieces of paper. If they try to, they will be fine and, thrown, and threatened to be thrown into a cage. Uh, this is what happened to this one guy 100 years ago, try to compete with the monopoly on delivering pieces of paper. Government sued him until they forced him out of business because he was doing faster, efficiently, much cheaper. And then uh, they just passed the law says, okay, we don't want that to happen again. No one's allowed to compete. Yeah. And that's why there's 60 billion dollars in debt. Um, this is why Detroit just fought for bankruptcy recently. Um, you know, that's, that's what happens whenever government has a monopoly on anything, it's unsustainable. Right. The, the stuff that they put out several generations ago, like in the 60s, like the Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, that stuff sounded great on paper, but of course the politician who uh, tricked everyone into getting that stuff, he's not going to be around, you know, 40, 50 years from now. And he's good. Yeah, and he's gone, right? And then they put off the real costs, you know, oh, well, we're not going to be alive then, so let's put off the real costs in the next generation, next generation. And now it's 40, 50% of your income stolen. Now it's uh, now you'll never see Social Security in your lifetime, you know, but you still have to pay for it. So they force a service on you before you're even born. Yeah, like we have no choice. You have no choice. Yeah, <laughs> it's like forcing. Uh, like, what's the worst uh, radio channel that you don't like to hear? Uh, country. Country. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Alright, so imagine government monopolized the radio station and they force country is the only one you're allowed to listen to. They're not allowed to switch the channels. They're not allowed to explore. That's what you're stuck with. Uh, and, that, and that's what government is. Uh, so I'm pretty much here advocating, let's turn to our community and turn away from government, you know? We don't use violence to solve our problems, let's turn away from that that only knows how to solve problems to violence, right? Because they're, they're afraid, because they want to say vote, 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 and the only reason why is they don't want us to use a real voice. They want to say your voice is a piece of paper, it's a chat, it's a lever, uh, where you go in secret and behind a curtain, you have to do it for years, right? But the thing is, if you actually use a real voice, we will find out we share these fundamental values for nonviolence, right? We find out that actually we, we can turn to our community instead and we realize we never needed you know, political rulers to begin with, strangers, arbitrarily deciding how best our lives should be lived, yeah. right? So in a free and voluntary society, you have communities of preferences. You can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, or across the street that's not. <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Go. Well, let me give you a pamphlet before you, uh, yeah. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. Bye, Lori. <laughs> you guys have uh, any questions on uh, how a free and voluntary society would work? Yeah? What are your thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> how, like, how much different, I guess, would it, would it be the pros, I guess? The pros? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so that's a great question. Alright, so you look at, like, the... All right, the way agriculture was sustained a hundred years ago, uh, they didn't have uh, tractors, they didn't have like sprinkler systems, they didn't have all this interesting new technology we have today. Yeah. Back then, agriculture looked different. It was it was founded on slavery, right? Using human beings as a, as a tool to go to the farm. And but when you but the, so when you ended that institution of violence, the people were saying, well, we've had this we've had slavery for thousands of years, right? This old idea is like when you end it. Uh, what, can you see what happened after you ended that institution of violent slavery? We free up a free market of different ways to solve these problems, not violent, right? We, we, we now have uh, planes that can, you know, dust crop. We now have uh, different ways to kind of attend to the field. We have new tools, you know? Yeah. Uh, and none of them involve using a human being and forcing them into the field. So that's pretty much uh, what would happen. Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like when you end this institution of violence, but we're going to have so much more freedom. We're going to have so much more ways to, to experience and enjoy life without being afraid, without being fearful. Like we can be thrown into a cage for a victim's crime. Yeah. Uh, so you can actually enjoy your lifestyle, live without being afraid, you know, without that, that fear. Um, and that's what government is. They have to force a preference, a majority of preference, into everyone and to a geographic region. Right? So it's always the majority preference to the minority and then you kind of go back and forth and that's where you have political parties. They're trying to get that seat of power. But without government, there's no seat of power to force a preference and it's live and let live. That is interesting. Well, I got pamphlets if you guys want. Okay. <laughs>
So once on uh, also on peaceful parenting, um, fully in that uh, you know you can't just say we're against the violence that government does, but the violence we do to each other is okay. The violence we do to children is okay. You have to universalize the principle. All violence is wrong, including the violence done to children. You know, spanking only teaches children that violence is the way to stop problems when we grow up. Right. And I'm not trying to judge parents. I talked to my mom too. You know, like what went happened back then. And she said, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And she had a harsh background too. Uh, so, but that was the handbook that was given to her, yeah. right? And that handbook hasn't had, had, had changed for generations, all right? So I'm just saying, let's take a closer examination of these things and um, look for better ways. Not lying to you, it's not a problem. Teach negotiation skills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, my name is Cal. Sabrina. Sabrina, pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Cal. I'm Sabrina. Sabrina, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Karina, Karina. <laughs> 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 you have a good time. Yes, well, yes, well. <laughs> so that's the head and violence behind this matrix. Behind government, this organization only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of the use of violence to solve any problems. Versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that us three here already share, right? Right. So, what are your thoughts on that? I agree. Yeah. yeah? I agree. I don't like the government. I don't right. <laughs> <laughs> nice! <laughs> We're in a good company then. <laughs> alright, alright, so so this moral position that us three already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, anions and cations, an means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. It doesn't mean without rules, we can still have rules, but what government has, they have a monopoly on law. All right, we have a monopoly on courts, on judges, security, rows, uh, currency, uh, air first class mail. Right, you don't have the freedom to unsubscribe, to cancel, or even withdraw your resources. Right, you don't even have the freedom to compete and against that monopoly. You have the freedom to provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the consumer. Right. And so that's and that's what in a free and voluntary society you would have. You know, you wouldn't have that monopoly the government has on these on these forced services on you that you're forced to accept and pay for, like social security. Yeah. Right. You'll never have that when you're when it's time for you to retire. Right. And that's what happens when you have any monopoly on anything. The costs always continue to go up, which is now why 40, 50 percent of nearly half your income stolen through taxation, and that's why the quality always goes down. Right. In a free market, it's the opposite. Right. Uh, quality always goes up and the cost of these always goes down. You can look like plasma screen TVs that came out a couple years ago, you know, cost thousands of dollars. And now it's, yeah. yeah, a few hundred bucks, you know, even better version, yeah. you know. And that's what you'll have, better services, better efficiency. Uh, but you, you'll never find that through government. So I'm only here pretty much just let's turn to our community and turn away from, from that organization. Let's use a real voice, right? Uh, you know, not, our voice is not a piece of paper. It's not a chat. It's a lever. We have a real voice. And they're afraid if we actually use it, we, we would have found out that we're not really just strangers, you know, and I. You know, we're part of a community that actually share these fundamental values. And we actually start reaching out and talking to each other. We realize we never needed government to begin with. Right? Okay. All right, wonderful. Well, right. I, I got, I, <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, you have any questions or uh, no, no? All right, well, I got pamphlets if you guys like. Oh, sure. All right. What's the YouTube channel called? Uh, well, you'll we'll find it on here under uh, Liberate RBA. Okay. Um, I guess it's under uh, my name right now, Cal Moloney, but I have a lot of other friends who do this. Like, this is Liberate RBA is the name of the organization. It's, it's a non political organization, obviously. And uh, there's a lot of other uh, Liberate groups already around the country. There's one in Australia, for example, and just uh, kind of pushing these ideas out all over the world. So, take good care. Violence is defined as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent of choice. I rape, murder, theft, and assault. That pretty much will be the standard in all these communities. You have different rules that say no cannabis in this community, another one that says it's perfectly fine, no smoking in that community, and this one says no smoking in that one. But they still have rules that you consent and agree to. So a real contract, like the social contract, is not a real contract. Right, it's not a tangible document. There is no power okay. attorney. You need something tangible like a mortgage contract, something you sign. So you'll have all these rich, diverse communities catering to you, to your lifestyle, saying, "Look, live here instead." You know, here are the rules, here are the consequences. Like, I don't like that one. And you have another one that says, "No, come to us." And so it's like, "All right, that one suits me well." Okay, well, what if you have two communities? One say, "Okay, well, we want to kill people." Fine, everybody believe that. Okay, right. somebody mess with you, you can kill them. Right. And you have another community that say, "No, you can't kill anybody." What? Isn't it morally wrong for the other community to accept such, you know, devastating, I guess, um, 
rules that it's fine to kill people or it's fine to be racist or it's fine to do yeah, things yeah. and it's it's morally wrong right right but right. if it's accepted in that community then it becomes right right so yeah exactly so if they want to say that uh it is okay it's morally okay to murder people to steal uh to rape and assault and you have that particular community uh remember self-defense of yourself and others is uh it's not violence it's self-preservation of yourself you know self-preservation of your body and uh to defend those that can't so you can still have uh self-defense you'll still you'll have so you'll still have security private dispute resolution organizations you'll still have the best security a lot of companies trying to provide for you they say look we'll provide you with the best security we'll protect you and then you look at their track history you look at the rating systems you look at people commenting it's like they have five stars out of five that's not like a good company and that's that's the company that will protect you never this is already existing right now in Detroit uh, so like it takes over an hour to the police to respond to any incidences because the government has collapsed it's filed for bankruptcy uh, so this one guy he's bought he, he, he created his own private security company in these neighborhoods and they're paying for the service they want the service he's not throwing anyone into a cage for victimless crimes no one's been shot the people he's protecting and he's had this for a couple years so you can have security well you can have that but at the same time you will need something and, and an organization that you can have organizations yeah but then you can't have it it will be so divided the whole country will be divided into little subgroups or big groups or small groups or yeah you, you have so much groups. choice yeah just but like then if you divide yeah a divided state cannot stand yeah you don't need a state all our state is is this a small group of people uh political rulers like people in city council who arbitrarily decide how best your life to be lived and to everyone in that large geographic region so and that's why there's a lot of infighting that's why it's like you're a democrat i'm a republican it becomes political warfare you, and that, that's what separates us that's what divides us instead of uniting us with the shared values that we already share let's live and let live and let's embrace the future let's live for embrace our free market choices like when you go to a mall you see all these different choices for clothes right and that's what you'll have and, and all the different clothes or choices for clothes don't you know uh go at war with each other they go at war and trying to say hey we'll get a discount off with us or like go to a food court the closest aggressiveness you'll get from them is like, hey, try free sample, yeah, right? Yeah, and that's what you have with these communities. Hey, come here, live here instead. Well, if you have that, if you if you say that, then you're looking at a very small point of view. What if, how are you gonna commit, uh, connect all these different the roads, oh, roads, yeah, 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 yeah. services? Yeah. How are you gonna connect? Uh, that? Uh, that's a great question. Okay, so the businesses build that to begin with. Government doesn't build that. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, so objectively, what they do is that they take your money. You don't have a choice as to see who they're gonna send it to, and they always send it to the politically connected they always send it to the to the lowest bidder uh, to the to the lowest quality of goods that's why it's like driving in the moon here in Richmond businesses build that to begin with uh, so the government doesn't build anything but at least in a free market now you can choose who you know who's not going to make it like driving on the moon experience for you but for the most part businesses have an incentive to want to buy these roads and build it together because they want people to travel to their place right well then if you have that how is the community going to decide eventually they won't have to vote or something for what for let's say if you want this business to build a road and then um, the, the, the B person wants that business yeah, yeah, yeah. to build a road. You don't have to come to an agreement one way or another and it's going to go through voting. Well, it'll, it'll probably come with a lot of the businesses just signing this together and trying to bet because I think they want but you then to get wouldn't the business, the business, if the business decides to, wouldn't the business become the government? Well, all right, so the different nature of what a government is, it's involuntary. You don't have a choice, remember? Uh, it's, it's involuntary. You don't have a freedom of economic choice. Without a government, you do now have a freedom of economic choice. It's voluntary now. There's no cohesiveness. There's no uh, forcing you to pay for a service you don't want. You have the freedom to compete. And that's what you have in a free and voluntary society, in a real free market. Uh, so it wouldn't be because the business can't force you to pay. Okay. Well, it's a good idea, but I got to go. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my name is Cal. Mike. Mike, pleasure to meet you, Mike. Well, hey. uh, uh, let me give you some pamphlets then. One's on uh, anarchy, the other one's peaceful parenting. Oh, um, I'll look at it. How of course, of course. It's a good conversation. Man. Yeah, of course, man. <laughs> Take ah. good care. So that's the hidden violence behind government, and that this organization, this matrix, only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions in the beginning that you and I already share. So, what are your thoughts on that? I agree with you. I've, I've been actually, I, I take a lot of classes and I've been really actually thinking about this a lot. Yeah? It's, yeah, a lot. I've been, I also see you on campus, but I've always <laughs> like not had time to like yeah, come and yeah. talk to you. I'm always like coming to class and going to class. But yeah, um, it's just been like this throughout history. Right. Throughout yeah. history and everything, every 
thing that the government or any government, for and like you know, to be honest, yeah. does is it's already been tried to violence. Yeah, technically, it's it's hypocritical because if they kind of tell us that we have freedom, but it's kind of like, hey, you can do this, but if you do this, yeah, you know, exactly, you'll, you'll go to jail. So, so you're not allowed to steal, but we're gonna go ahead and call it tax. You're not allowed to murder, but we're gonna call it an organized war, right? So they always have these fancy words to call it something different from what this truth is, because uh, that's how they hide the relationship. At least for me, yeah. <laughs> other governments accept that they're not very yeah. democratic. So. Alright, so this position, this moral stance that you and I share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, Cations and anions, an means without, archi means rulers, like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. So we can still have rules. But don't, do you think that if we let everybody, you know, do whatever they want, mm -hmm. that there will be, you know, yeah, peace so, and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, because so what we're but, asking people to do what they want, we're trying to give them the, the freedom of economic but the choice. But that's you and me who have, you know, our moral standards right. but there are also other people who don't really share those moral standards and they would actually solve problems with violence and they would steal and they right, would right, do right. all that and the government is there to you know Right, right, right. So, so the, the services that they have to control that mm -hmm. they have a monopoly on those services right they have a monopoly on law right you're not allowed to have a polycentric legal system they have a monopoly on law they have a monopoly on courts on judges on security on roads on currency on delivering first class mail pieces of paper they have a monopoly on services they force on you you don't have the freedom to unsubscribe transfer payment withdraw or even have the freedom to compete to provide a better service it's not going to be harmful and abusive to the consumer all right so you can still have security you can still have uh rules you just don't need the strangers arbitrarily dictating how best to decide, you know, the best business service. And also, I also best. believe that um, our leaders don't necessarily know how we live. Yeah. Most of the leaders, most of the Senate, most of the Congress, most of everybody, are people who have lived the wealthy life most yeah. of their lives. So I don't understand how people think that it's best to elect someone that have no clue how the 99% right. <laughs> people live to make our lives better right when they have no clue as to i i have this You're theory complete strangers. What's i theory? have this theory if you go and ask um candidate for senate Busting tables to pay for our school. Right. You know, it's. And that's and that's what, yeah, and that's the thing with, with political rulers. You, know, you don't really have a connection with them, right? Because the thing is, at the end of at the end of the day, they're forcing their idea and, and opinion on how best everyone's life should be in a geographic region of strangers, right? So and, and that's and that's how and everyone's trying to buy for that seat of power to to prevent the other people's preference being forced on them or to force their preference onto everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's no, there's not the, that kind of connection like you're mentioning. Uh, Oprah Winfrey actually came through this incident a couple years ago. Oh. She didn't know how to put gas in a car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and also, that like time where, what's his face? Oh, what's that guy who has the hair? Uh, Seinfeld? <laughs> no. Kramer? No, not the other guy with the hair. Oh, uh, Donald Trump? Yes, yes, that guy with the hair. That guy with the <laughs> And black he wants hair, yeah. to... He wanted to run for president. Right! That was the most hilarious thing I've ever heard that's of what, That's what it is, and it's also, a circus show now. And also, um, I don't even understand the... The reason why uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger Right. My credentials for I was Conan. <laughs> I'm going to uh, I don't know cut cut taxes with my Conan sword. Oh my god, that was like, what in God's name are people thinking moment for me? I was like, 
I, I don't understand how people think. Yeah. And, and, and there, there are selections. Yeah, right? like, I'm like. Dumb and dumber. <laughs> oh my god. Like, I'm more and more like, I used to want to be an architect, but now, like, I'm honestly, obviously. Why are you testing me? I'm my goddamn self. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, that's great. All right, so, I mean, that's, and that's, that's the thing that I want to go right now. I want, I want to, I'm part of an organization called Liberty RBA. It's a non political organization. Mm -hmm. Just turn to a community and turn away from government, right? We can have communities of preferences. Right, that's not what they don't want us to have. We yes, can have that's the thing. Right. But is it what is your the objective? Yeah. All right. So the objective is so you look at Detroit filed for bankruptcy recently. Before that happened, last year, forty-seven percent of all homeowners just stopped paying the property taxes. Stop altogether. Why? Uh, because the government was no longer providing the services. Right. So then people say, well, why am I giving them taxes if they're not providing services? Right. They start to understand finally that anytime you have a monopoly in services, not only does the cost always goes up. But the quality always goes down, right? Because there's no freedom of competition. So 47%, like in 160 block radius of homes, only one person pays their property tax. And so, and a lot of them try to shut down to take some of their properties. And some people find it easier to just buy their house back at auction and pay the property tax. Uh, but then, and then eventually they just stop doing it all together. But that's not people who understood the government was immoral. That's just people naturally seeing this on their own. But so, that's immoral. Yeah, so we can get there before. Like, well, it would be. It won't be long before Richmond also filed for bankruptcy. There's a lot of cities in California who already did it. Uh, Europe is having a big problem with this right now. Uh, San Clemente is next. Is this because it's, it's these unfunded liabilities like Social Security? You'll never have that in your life. You know, that's another forced service. I always like. I always, you know, like I'm a student. I work. I pay my taxes. But yeah. Where what, what like I don't have insurance. I don't have anything. Yeah. To my name, but I'm still paying taxes. Right. Like I still don't know where that money is going. And that's what I mean. You don't have a freedom of economic choice, and that's 40 to 50 percent of your income. Right. So with, without government, you'll have that back. Actually, they, oh, this study just recently came out. You are 75 percent poorer because all of the restrictions on trade. Uh, so someone who's making 57000 today should be making a little bit close to $300,000. But just the different ways that they put tax on everything. The cost always goes up and it's, yeah. There's like, if you buy an expensive car, like, how much your money goes away? Yeah. Tax. <laughs> if you buy an expensive house, it's all tax. Right? Um, anything that you want to acquire, it's all taken away. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. stuff adds up. It adds up. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty much trying to help people, uh, let, let's let go of politics. You know, even if they do legalize cannabis tomorrow, so what? 75 years, finally gained one strap of our freedoms. I need to study actually, I actually need to study. I didn't know if you had left for it. Alcohol is legal. Right? Alcohol is more detrimental than cigarettes. Cigarettes are more detrimental. But yeah, no, I've never heard anyone dying from cannabis. Right? There are no studies report, nothing out there. It should be, it should be like, as they control, you know, like, no, don't drink and drive, they should just don't. You know, smoke and drive, or don't do anything well. Yeah. Being under the influence. Actually, they, they found, uh, like in Europe, they removed government from the from the from road of travel. So there's no stoplights, no traffic signs, and any of that stuff. Uh, and what they found is that traffic accidents went down, traffic congestion went down, because it becomes more of a shared road experience. Because the only thing you're paying attention to in the road is just the lights. Uh, red means stop. There's nobody on the road, but you still have to wait. Orange means go even faster. Um, so remove all that stuff, there's eye contact and things move faster. Accidents went down. So that's like one So there was a study in the Netherlands where like when you know that like marijuana is legal there. Yeah. So basically their prison system was shut down because everybody that was in prison there was because of right. marijuana <laughs> and all the taxpayer yeah. dollars went to um, you know, funding those prison systems. Yeah. And when that was legal, <laughs> prison went down. Right. So basically the tax dollars can be used for more useful things than funding prisoners. Right. And even if, yeah, and then you trace all the useful stuff that they try to put it for. Again, there's a monopoly and you still and plus, have the cost. And also, if they legalize this, um, the whole cartel business thing will just like. Right. You end the war on drugs, there's no gangs anymore. When you had prohibition, that invited the mafia to come in, <laughs> right? So you, you don't really have any of these problems. You don't really have, uh, you know, victimless crimes. You know, over a million people in cages. Uh, more than any other governments in the world, right? Uh, we're nearly 75% of them for victimless crimes. I know. Yeah. I just saw today on Animal Planet. It was the most hilarious thing ever. So this guy shot a deer 
<laughs> in this some area that was allowed to shoot a deer in but the deer went over to another section where it was not allowed to shoot a deer in and then he got in trouble for it and that was like he was breaking the law by shooting a deer that land like literally it's like like right, who, owned, who, who owned the land? The government. The government. See? So like he got in trouble for shooting a deer in that land. I'm like, really? You don't have better things to do in your life than enforcing how to shoot a deer. Right. Really. Or having a lemonade stand. You know? <laughs> or uh, uh, like, like, like even permits and licenses that uh, discriminates against the poor from competing. Like in Washington, I think it's like $600 to get a uh, permit to cut hair. Right, and these, of course, this is these stuff always increases every year. Yeah, I have this. Also, I have another theory where, like, the government is trying to perfect the system so much that eventually it's just gonna all come because throughout history it does. It does. Yeah. It does. Like, well, it's very close. Uh, another monopoly they have, like exactly what you're saying, they have a monopoly in currency, like the dollar, for example. Uh, before 1913, used to be a lot of different kinds of money. People had the freedom to compete and share and trade. But the government says no more, it's illegal, you have to trade only with the US dollar. And because they have a monopoly on it now, it's lost over 97% of its value. That hurts the poor the worse. No incentive to save. Every dollar just keeps depreciating whenever you try to put on your mattress. So it's only had 3% left to go before we'll roll bearing March before the economy collapses. The economy has collapsed. Yeah, how many times can we count now? Yeah. I'm like actually studying for an exam tomorrow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Economy. It's like a trend. It, it collapses every like 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. Like it just goes up, and then there's like when it goes up, there's like little control. Like they're like, oh, okay, everybody's doing great. Let's just leave uh, like that. And then when it goes down, it's like too much control, and then it keeps going down. Yeah. And, it just, and, and that's just the government interfering at every level. Uh, it's always you always find like the opposite always like, happens. I, 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 yeah, like and. That's the thing, like, I think it was the the thing that, that happened before where, like, the government didn't interfere in anything, and then I mean, things were going great, and then it fell down again, oh, but then yeah. now it's in, like, literally interfering in everything. Right? Yeah. Even want to interfere in who you want to marry. Right, exactly. Great point. So, like, marriage licenses, for example, the only reason marriage licenses exist is because over 100 years ago, the government created it to prevent interracial marriages. That's why they, you, you look in the history of it, that's why they created it. It was to prevent from uh, people of color to marry each other. Okay, so it's a racist thing to begin with. Government created that. And then now it's... it's and then, yeah, and now they found a way that, you know what, we can make money off of this, right? Because you have to pay, you have to ask permission. Like, uh... What is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like asking my dad, hey dad, can I like marry this dude? Oh, you gotta give me a thousand dollars first. It's like yeah. dowry. Yeah. I'm like, that happened like a million years ago. Like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, yeah, that's, that's the what happens. They find any little way to wants take from you. to here. decide what to do with my uterus. Yeah. Like, are you serious? Like, how does a guy, a guy yeah. that has no idea about what it is to be a woman, say, oh, abortion is illegal? Right. Like, who the fuck are you to say it's illegal? I'm the woman. It's my body. It's your body. It's when it's like within my body, I get the right to do whatever I want to my body. If suicide is legal, then that should be legal. It's right. my body. I'm the one who's creating it. Right. After it leaves my body, okay. I can't <laughs> yeah. kill it. Like, but you can't tell them the same. You can't tell your political rulers what they can and cannot do with their body, right? But they will try their best when they have the power to tell you what you can and cannot do. But the, the world reverse is the same, right? So that's what I find in the dynamics with that relationship with government. It's only totally one-sided. You, know, you can't tell the Congress. And, and also, it's not, and it's not only just the government rules. In my opinion, it's also these heightened industries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have the government. So the corporations are right, so that's that's a big thing. So you say you have like this economic exam tomorrow. So one one quick quick thing to understand what corporations are. There's just a piece of paper backed and enforced by government that allows them to escape personal liability for their actions. Like they always go off the coast of Alaska. No CEO lost their job, lost their house, lost their money, went to jail, nothing. Except the seals die and then the Yeah. They lower employee salaries, increase consumer prices, it's we who bear the cost of that. So without government, there's no such thing as a corporation. It goes back to the way how it used to be. You know, when people took mitigated risk because they had enough money to save up, good risk, good business decisions, you know, because you are held liable. People can see you if you have a bad product, you know, if it hurts other people. You, know, you can't escape from that. 
So that's well, that's where you would have in a free and voluntary society. You know, real responsibility, real action. You'll still have. I mean, go ahead. No, I was just yeah. like, it's funny. We can't ex escape it. It's everywhere, every country. Yeah, like, yeah. If you don't like to go to some like deserted island and then make your own little yeah. thing, like it's you can't accept it. You can't. It's, so like I think about it all the time, and then I'm like, you know what? Like there's just no point with this. Like I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna live and die, and then just like, get over right? this. Yeah. yeah. It's, like so frustrating. Like you just can't do anything about it. How do you escape all of that? Go yeah. to a deserted island or Mars. You're right. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's that's why I have to do. I feel like I have to do this. Um, you know, change since it started in the White House in DC. It doesn't start in countries I've never been to. You know, it starts with myself at home in my own community. And to me, it's uh, here, where I guess, where I try to help other people in Paris. Let, let go of the policy, let go of the ADF government. You know, let's just turn to our community, let's find nonviolent solutions, right? Um, and the thing is, tomorrow, the policies are there. It is written right, 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 by right. law that says, hey, okay, if you don't pay your taxes, yeah, right, right, right. So we can't just up and say, hey, we're not going to pay Well, taxes. yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. You, all right, well, like, for example, if uh, one by one people are not paying their taxes here and there, they'll pick you off like ants, right? But when we have several thousand people, just like in Detroit, what happened when 47% of all homers stopped? Well, that was when they were kind of united, they were kind of did that together. We can do that here. When we have several thousand ants, kind of like when everyone was an abolitionist, eventually that word and meaning went away. Right? So when everyone becomes an anarchist, eventually that burden meaning will go away. But you only need just a few thousand anarchists to push these ideas. Everyone's saying the same thing and agree. Taxation is theft. It's wrong and immoral. That voice will per permeate. Right? And then eventually the media can't ignore that. Because this is something government doesn't want anyone to hear. Right? They've done so, such a good job trying to hide this from everyone. Yeah, they've done a right? I know. <laughs> yeah, it's still in 1984. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so that's I how we can get. I government has completely fooled its people into thinking that they should hurt. Right. Completely. Yeah, it's, it's nothing but like lies. People in the democracy, they're like, I'm like, no, there's a homeowner association that tell you what to color and what not to color your damn house, and you own the damn house. Right. Like, they tell you what to do with the house. It's like, oh, you own it, but you can't really do this and that and this to it. Right. So, how, what's the point of me owning it if I can't, you know, exercise my right into like changing it however I want. Right. And you know same goes with everything else. Yeah, a lot of the uh, homeowner associations are uh, have a lot of uh, relationships with government. You know, so they have a lot of uh, like retail associations, a lot of different ways that kind of controls businesses. And all the, like this is my business. You know, this is my product. This is my value. I created a trade. Don't tell me what I can can do with my business. So you'll find it, that permeates in all everywhere, like you mentioned. Um, you know, that's and that's what uh, what government does. Then you know, it just forces out to everyone. You can't really escape that. But, 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 but our thing is, so when we reach enough numbers, when we get enough anarchists, when we have several thousand, then together, unitedly, then we can say no more taxes. Then we can say together, we can stop paying it together. Because one by one, yeah, they'll pick you up. Mm -hmm, yeah. But when you're united, we have several thousand people, when they try to take, take a house, because like this is what happened to a guy in DC a few weeks ago. Uh, he paid off his house, he was uh, retired, he doesn't have a lot of money, but because it, he owed $156 in property taxes, the government just put his house on the lien, foreclosed it, and kicked him off into the street. $156. Yeah, that was in the Washington Post this, uh, like two weeks ago. This has happened. Oh, oh now he's God. homeless. Um, so that's, that's what I mean by that, right? So, and that's, and that's what they'll attempt to do. But if we have several thousand anarchists here, we can protect each other soon. It's like, where are you going to get past? Hey, hey, oh, how you doing? Like, are, are, you can't get past all of them. But we mentioned when they try to, the word is going to be out and everyone's going to know, and then the, gig is, the game is up. <laughs> you know? I mean, that is how everyone it has. Right, and, and this is going to be a non-violent one. I just want to do a transition, a peaceful you know, change. Yeah, that's very important. But there is going to be, I mean, in every, in everything in history, you will see that there have. The there is, there is. Humans are yeah. violent. Well, there so far, well, I, I pretty much everyone I talk to here, I, I, I mean, I'm here every day, like we were mentioning. Yeah. Um, a majority of people, everyone I talk to, like over 100 people now, all agree that violence is not a way to solve problems. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. Like we all share these I fundamental agree values. I agree with it, but then when you know push comes to shove, if they are acting violently right. upon us, right. it's only human to act violently. To act in self-defense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Self I, I agree. I agree. And I just want to preempt it, you know, because when it collapses, you have those violent revolutions, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now. You know, before like a couple of years from now, before it gets to that point, 
finally we have a community here that's kind of united and can have a peaceful transition versus any other community that wasn't ready. And then, yeah, you do have a lot of that collision. You do have a lot of that, um, you know, violent revolution, violence begets more violence, you know. And I just want to prevent that. Um, and, you know, you don't need your friends and family or your loved ones to get hurt, you know, injured or work to die. Yeah. Well, my name is Cal. Hi, I was surprised to talk to you. I have some pamphlets if you like. We have a. Uh, we actually have a freedom gathering this uh, Friday. It's a party. Meet other anarchists. It's a potluck, philosophical discussion. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And so yeah, this is also for peaceful parenting. Uh, you have to be against all violence, not just state violence. Again, it has to be the violence you're doing. Yeah. I have controlled my temper. I know, right? <laughs> the feeling never goes away, but yeah. I have such restraints. I have so much. Thank you. <laughs> of course, take good care.